Hello and welcome to this session on Click Talent Cloud's Packaging and Pricing Overview. My name is Samir Akhle and today we're going to talk about the Click Talent Cloud's customer value, what is included in that offer, a set of offerings, why should a customer care, and then we'll delve into the actual packages themselves, uh, as well as the pricing model and the pricing metrics that are uh, part of that uh, offering. And last but not the least, we're also going to go quickly over the customer facing usage reports that uh, are uh, an integral part of this offering as well. So without further ado, let's start with the customer value itself. Let's first talk about a little uh, around what is Click Talent in the first place. Talent, as, as you may know, was a company that was acquired by uh, and merged into Click uh, in 2023. And Click Talent represents the amalgamation, the combination of capabilities across Click and Talent to solve the entirety of the data life cycle. So as many other customers, uh, you must be uh, trying to deal with or trying to address the need to uh, bring in information and data from a variety of different sources, from SaaS services to databases to SAP, ERP system and so on, and move it to a destination of your choice. And you may want to do that through a number of different types of patterns, whether it's ETL, ELT, API integration, and so on. And uh, <clears throat> that then moves into the next phase, which is around improving the quality of the data that you already have. Right? And that helps drive uh, improved quality uh, in the insights and the outcomes that you derive from that. And so uh, that's a, a big step two phase uh, in, in that current data life cycle. And uh, lastly, once you have high quality data, I'm sure you'll uh, want to also then figure out how the, the best possible ways to use that and, and deliver that data uh, to the right destination, whether it's users, applications, systems, uh, you may want to think of them as uh, uh, the, in terms of creation of data products, as well as to feed AI systems and AI uh, algorithms to actually take it one step further. So in this entirety of uh, data lifecycle, Click Talent helps you through every step of the way. And the way we uh, think of that is in, in terms of the core benefits that we deliver in Click Talent Cloud as, as part of the capacity model. So there, what is really a capacity model? Uh, there are three key things to note. First is the packages that you're gonna see in a few minutes are really designed to solve specific customer scenarios and use cases, right? So this is designed to make your decision-making much simpler. So depending on the scenario that you're trying to address within your organization, you can easily pick out of a few uh, choices in terms of the packages and then focus your attention on actually delivering on the uh, perceived value or the promised value uh, of that solution. So uh, making the decision to procure the right solution for you is, is gonna be much easier through this model. But also we are, we've designed the packages in such a way that no matter where you are in your uh, maturity model, uh, we can deliver on all the capabilities that you want. So whether you're just looking for data integration or you're trying to also solve data quality as well as uh, API and application integration and so on, we have the right packages that deliver all those capabilities to you. The second, uh, and this is a key one, which is a tighter alignment to business value. And what do I mean by that? Uh, it's uh, through research and, and through a lot of customer conversations, we realized that uh, we needed a better way, a more efficient way to deliver value to you uh, so that it aligns to how you define success. And usage of the product is a lot more uh, directly correlated to how you see value in our solution. And the capacity model directly delivers that. So, and you'll see a lot more of, of how we do that in, in a few minutes. So alignment to the value that you see in the solution is, is really significantly improved with the with the click talent cloud capacity model. And the second part uh, of that is, we actually do not restrict the number of users that you uh, get using on this uh, for this product. We allow, whether you want 10 users or 50 users or hundreds of users, we allow uh, uh, unrestricted access to the solution. 
which allows you to get the tools, get the products in the hands of the people that, that need it across your organization without really thinking about the user-based cost uh, of, of doing so. So that's, that's a big part of, of uh, delivering the value to you in a way that makes sense to you. And the last is really flexibility in terms of how you use this product. We can continue to maintain uh, the flexibility or deliver flexibility to you uh, in terms of how you want to deliver or deploy that solution. Whether you're uh, decided on a particular uh, public cloud or you're trying to deploy it across multiple public clouds in a multi-cloud infrastructure or uh, span the capabilities across on-premises as well as uh, public clouds in a hybrid cloud environment. Uh, we support all of those uh, models of deployment and also uh, do so in, a, in what we call the capacity model, which allows you to uh, predict and, and plan your, your uh, outlays uh, a lot more uh, easily and with a lot more predictability than a, a pure consumption-based uh, model where you are potentially at a risk of uh, getting surprised by an by a invoice at the end of the month, right? So all of this is really uh, uh, delivered in a capacity model, uh, which we're highlighting with Click Talent Cloud today. With that said, let's actually jump into the actual packages themselves. There are four editions or four packages, if you will, right? Uh, and, and the first two have all to do with data movement, right? Starter package actually uh, helps you move data from hundreds of different sources of, of SaaS uh, applications mostly uh, into a destination of your choice, right? This is where a lot of the customers start with. Uh, standard package actually builds on top of that and includes all the capabilities of Starter but then adds on real-time data replication with change data capture, right? It's a big step function forward. The, the other two packages are premium and enterprise. And as, as before, premium builds on top of standard, so includes everything that standard has, but also uh, adds data transformation, data quality, and API and application integration capabilities. And this is really, uh, uh, if you're familiar with the former talent capabilities, Premium and enterprise packages are where talent capabilities really come to the fore. And the enterprise package, which again builds on the premium package, uh, allows you to uh, create data products, uh, get connectivity to specific enterprise applications, mainframes and SAP systems for data replication, but also then uh, provides you connectivity and support for generative AI uh, models in the future as well. So uh, with that said, let's jump into uh, how should you decide which package would, uh, which edition would make sense to you? And uh, as you may have seen before uh, from Click, we have defined a number of scenarios, number of different types of uh, use cases that customers use us for. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but uh, whether you're just uh, trying to solve uh, data movement or you're trying to uh, uh, embark on an initiative to build your own data warehouse or data lake, or uh, initiate a, a data quality and governance initiative. Uh, whichever the use cases are, we have actually designed the additions to map to these use cases. And the way we do that is those four additions that you saw uh, map to all of those uh, use cases that we just uh, saw. And so depending on what you're trying to do, uh, you can easily choose uh, one out of the four uh, additions uh, so that you're able to quickly start focusing on deployment and, and, and use of the products to drive business, business outcomes for yourself. So uh, that's, that's the significantly simplified uh, choice uh, that I was talking about uh, earlier. And uh, we're, we're designing, uh, we have designed all of these specifically to make sure that you all can uh, make a choice that suits your needs today and then uh, quickly get down to using them. Uh, as uh, noted earlier, uh, if, you, if your needs evolve over time and you are adding no more use cases, you can easily evolve uh, and, and change which package you end up using uh, as well. So that flexibility and, and streamlined uh, uh, smooth uh, change is, is absolutely supported within Click Talent Cloud. So let's now look into the pricing model itself. 
the four additions all uh, are based on a capacity model. Now, what, what do we mean by capacity? Capacity is really uh, at its very simplest uh, sense, uh, a model where you sign up for a certain minimum quantity of capacity of product usage. And if you need more than that, uh, you can buy incremental capacity on top of that, right? And uh, there are uh, the way we deliver that capacity is in terms of capacity bands. And there are two types of bands. One band is uh, pertaining to data movement, and the other band is pertaining to the uh, advanced capabilities around data quality and API integration and application integration and so on, which uh, which we uh, denominate in terms of executions and duration. And we'll talk more about this uh, in a second. Uh, to start with, uh, each edition or package uh, comes with a minimum quantity of capacity. As you can see, starter, standard, premium, and enterprise have uh, increasing levels of uh, data movement capacity uh, in the initial band. And you can always add more bands as, as needed. And uh, if you need the uh, capabilities delivered uh, uh, around data quality and API and application integration and so on, uh, the executions and durations uh, become meaningful, and each band of executions and durations delivers 6,000 executions per month and 250 hours of duration per month. And all of these capacities are monthly, uh, but you can commit to them for a year or more uh, based, on, based on your needs. So let's now uh, dig into the actual pricing metrics themselves. As you can see, there are really there are two types of capacity bands, but there are three metrics, data movement, executions, and duration. So we'll look at all three of them one by one. In terms of data movement, it's actually a, a simple definition, which is we, we measure the total volume of data that you move in a given month. And we measure that in gigabytes. Uh, and the way it works is that initially, when you first get set up, uh, I'm sure there's a lot more data that you are going to move in the initial de in, uh, deployment. And we do not count that initial data load. That initial data load is actually free. Uh, what we do measure is the ongoing iterative changes in the data and incremental addition of data that happens over, over time. That is what gets measured within the data moved metric. And in terms of the actual calculation of data movement itself, uh, each uh, field uh, in your data set actually is mapped to a, a variety of established uh, documented data types. And I'm, I'm showing a few uh, data types here on the screen. And each data type has a defined size. And so depending on the type of data that you have and, uh, uh, and the scale of that data, uh, this uh, mapping of data types to the size uh, of each uh, data type will ultimately get used in the calculation. And all of this is very uh, formally documented on our documentation uh, site, which you can review in more detail. In terms of executions, right? Uh, executions durations are the two metrics within that capacity band uh, that I talked about. So executions are simply a measure of the total number of times a particular job, or in the case, uh, in, the, in, in specific terms, artifact IDs, uh, is executed in a given month, right? And there are two types of jobs uh, that uh, you need to know about. First is actually what we call a batch job, which actually has a very distinct start and end, right? So typically jobs start uh, at a given point and they can run for a minute, a second, an hour, uh, depending on what you're doing, right? Batch jobs have a very definitive start and end. And so for batch jobs, we, we count the actual uh, uh, number of times a particular job gets executed in a given month, right? In this example, uh, job one gets executed twice in July, three times in August. That's what gets uh, tracked and reported at the end of the month. Uh, one, one important thing to note is we want to uh, count job executions only when they're successful, right? If for some reason, if there, if there might have been on a rare occasion, some systemic issue for the job failing, we would not count that and, and would not apply towards this metric. And so as a result of this, 
we count the job execution only at the end, at, only at the successful completion of that job. And so in case of job two, uh, as you can see, uh, the job starts in one month, but if it concludes in the following month, we actually count it only at the conclusion. So that, uh, that job that's uh, designated in, in, in yellow color here actually ends up being counted in the month of August in this example, right? Hopefully that, that was uh, clear. Uh, now let's talk about the other type of uh, jobs we, we also uh, support, which are always on jobs. Now always on jobs by, by the name, uh, as, as it suggests, uh, are always on. So you start them once and they, they're perpetually on, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And so uh, from an execution count perspective, we count an uh, always on job uh, once for each month that, it's, that it was. So in the case of job three, uh, it would count as one execution in July and one, one execution in August. And that would get added up in the total tally for, that, uh, for the respective months. Now, always on jobs are, uh, as an example, either routes or APIs or, or so on. So that, that's a category of jobs that are perpetually on. Now, with that said, now let's now delve into the duration metric itself. Duration, as the name suggests, is a measure of the time taken for a particular execution of a particular job. Uh, and it's, uh, it's aggregated for a given month uh, in, in terms of reporting. Each individual uh, job, actually, uh, the duration for those jobs is actually captured in milliseconds, by the way. So it's very granular uh, data capture. But we aggregate all of that uh, in and report it in terms of hours for a given given month, just for uh, from a metric tracking and in billing and invoicing perspective. And as before, we're going to talk about batch jobs and always on jobs and how that might uh, how the duration might be different. So for batch jobs, again, uh, we just count how many minutes or hours or milliseconds a particular job uh, ran for in a given uh, given month. And in this case, job one ran for three hours total in, in the month of July and, and ran for six hours in the month of August. And that gets added up uh, for those respective months. And as before, job two, uh, uh, the, the execution that started in July but ended in August, that gets count. That duration for that job gets counted only in August. So that's pretty straightforward. Uh, always on jobs, by the way are a little bit nuanced in terms of uh, the duration uh, metric. Always on jobs by definition are always on. So, uh, and just because a job is always on does not mean that as a customer, you're getting value for every single second of that, uh, of that time. So what we have created is actually, we've created a conversion uh, uh, rate and a progressive scale for that. So uh, depending on the number of always on jobs you have, we actually uh, have a progressively declining rate of conversion. So uh, if you have only one job, you would get converted at uh, converted down to a, 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 a smaller chargeable duration. And the more always on jobs you add, uh, that chargeable uh, rate per job actually keeps shrinking. So that, that, that creates an incentive for you to uh, deliver, de design and deploy more jo always on jobs over time. And uh, that converted uh, duration is what gets tracked and measured, uh, not actual duration for always on jobs, right? So just again, sim uh, simplified, uh, the duration is actual duration for batch jobs, but for always on jobs, we actually convert that down to a smaller number. And that, that conversion factor depends on the scale of your uh, uh, always on job uh, deployment. With that said, uh, I'm going to end on, on uh, a, a request that uh, a lot of customers have from us, which is, OK, all of these metrics, uh, how do I know as a customer what's going on with my own, own tenant, my, my own setup? So we have uh, pr produced uh, self-serve dashboards that you will have uh, access to, uh, where you'll be able to measure all uh, and track and, and uh, report on all the metrics that we just talked about, data movement, uh, duration, execution, and more. And uh, we not only give you a self-serve dashboard that allows you to dynamically 
track the, the, the usage and trends over multiple months, but we also give you more granular details around uh, understanding what's driving the usage, right? So in the case of uh, the job executions or duration, you can actually not just uh, look at the usage and duration at an aggregate, but you can also um, analyze it by in specific tenants or specific environments or by workspaces, by engines and so on, which allows you to uh, dig in deeper to understand which factors, which teams, which types of jobs are driving usage uh, or and are behind the trends, whether they're going up or down. And that granularity is, is really important for anyone uh, of you who are trying to use this to do internal cost allocation uh, within different departments, within different teams as well. And so all of this is, is part of the offering. Uh, every, every customer uh, gets this dashboard to uh, access on your own. And obviously, uh, if needed, we're here to uh, clarify certain things and, and support you uh, in your journey ahead. So hopefully that helped you understand the packaging, pricing, and metrics uh, of ClickTalent Cloud. With that said, I thank you for your time. Thank you.